<clears throat> Hello, I'm Michael. Uh, this is the first time I've stuck up a video like this on YouTube, so if you're going to comment, that'd be really nice, but please be kind. If I've got something wrong, just tell me. I'll try and um, try and correct that. So what you're looking at here is a set of carbs. They're Makuni BS36 carbs, and they're off a Yamaha FJ1200. So I've got a Yamaha FJ1200, it's about 30 years old and I've owned it for just about all its life. I'm very fond of it and it's been going through a ridiculous restoration and refurb that I've been doing over many years now. I'm running into a little bit of a problem at the, the final end of that refurb with the carburetors and how they're working or not, the original ones that I've restored. And so I bought a second hand set of carbs for reasons I'll explain later. This is them. Uh, I got them off eBay, cost me about £88 including postage. And they were pretty manky when I got them and um, I've cleaned them up, done a few things to them, I bought some parts and I'm going to rebuild these all with lots of new internals so I thought I'd talk you through that and if you've got a set of BS36 carbs on a, an FJ12 or I think they also get used on some of the big XJs and um, the XSs and also I think Suzuki GSs, some of those use them. Then, I wrote down about 15 things that I think I've probably learned, um, mistakes, cock-ups along the way that hopefully I'll, I'll not make the same mistakes building this set as I did with my set. I'll try and share some of that stuff now. So you're looking at what adds up to about 322 individual parts. That's quite a lot of parts, so I guess uh, be very careful when you strip these um, that you don't lose bits. That's pretty easy to do. I've done that before, no matter how careful you think you're being. Um, you can buy an actually a brand new set from a fantastic company, a guy called Randy Rajeshell at RPM Racing in the USA. Brilliant guy, amazing website, also runs the fjowners.com USA website, absolute mine of information. And RPM are brilliant and sell loads of original and um, special bespoke parts they've had made for old FJs because they get used over there. They were used a bit here for the Legends, little cars for racing series, but America, big place, bigger market. So amazing resource to go to. FJ Owners Club in the, in the UK as well, Phil Hacker. I've been a member of that for just about 30 years as well. Loads of great info. He's been a fab guy for me over the years. And I'll mention a few people along the way who I've found and used that have been great. Anyway, number one point is really obvious. Take photos, but also take video um, if you're going to strip the carbs. Um, you know, you might think I'll remember how this goes together. Trust me, you won't. In fact, slightly like embarrassingly, the reason, one of the main reasons I bought the second-hand set of carbs was not because at that point I'd worked out there were some problems with my original carbs, but actually because I couldn't remember how certain things went together. Um, and I actually had to buy a set of carbs so I could work that out. So that's pretty nuts. Um, really useful to take video of yourself dismantling something and pointing out where things go and how they work. I know it sounds weird and it feels weird doing it and it's very weird watching yourself telling yourself how to do something, but trust me, that's important. So first point is take photos, but also video and talk over it. Second point is actually about the throttle arms. So these are the, the throttle arms, which sit through the carb bodies, obviously, in here, right away. Yeah. sit through the carb body there and they have the butterfly plate throttle valve goes on them and that obviously um, when you twist the throttle grip causes this to turn. So a couple of things about these, there were definitely some things I've learned in relation to these. Firstly, lots of people refurbishing their carbs actually probably won't take these out at all. They just leave them in because they've got all sorts of brackets and springs and complicated bits. Um, so if you're deciding to take these out, and there's some reasons why you might do that, partly I just did it because I'm a bit obsessive about refurbing and cleaning everything. Um, number one, take photos and videos really carefully of these uh, because uh, there are loads of little washers and spacers and plastic and metal clips and all sorts of things. Uh, and you really need to work out how these little return springs sit and where they sit on the card body in order to return the throttle shaft. So really easy to get that wrong. That was the main reason I had to buy a set of carbs. I couldn't work out how those go, no matter how many photos and things I looked at of carbs, because they say not everybody takes them off. Second thing about the throttle arms is, again, it seems obvious, but really keep these separate and bagged up carefully and separately numbered as to which carb they go with, because they're all just a little bit different, just a little bit different from each other. Uh, I've actually just machine etched on them what ones they are. I mean that's pretty obvious that that's number three because it's the one that the throttle cables run around but it's not so obvious with the others are they similar so you really need to watch that. Um, the 
Third thing about the throttle arms is the little shaft seals. So there are little seals here, little rubber seals that sit in in the recess there. They actually sit with a little cup facing out the way, which seems a little bit weird when you get them. You see they've got a cup and it sits facing out the way. And those sit at either end of the card body and seal the throttle shaft. And one of the reasons that you might want to actually strip your carbs completely is these can obviously get hard and brittle with age and then they might not seal well and end you up getting you know, leaks and the carbs not running right because there's a little bit of air leaking past these. I've heard that can be a bit of a problem. Um, so that's one reason why you might want to change them. You also have to be careful when you're cleaning the carbs with things like carb cleaner products that you're not going to damage these. So if you want to completely strip and really clean them, you might decide to take them off. But I say be, be really careful with that. Um, replacing those little seals, actually interestingly, if you look at the Yamaha parts diagram on any of the usual Yamaha parts providers website, you'll see they're not listed. Actually, it turns out they do exist as a Yamaha part. That's the part number. So they exist, that's it there, and you can buy them. Uh, I had a look at CMS, NL, Fowlers, Motorcycle, Spares, Parts, EU, all the normal guys. They're about, cheapest is about £5.70, including VAT. You need eight of those, um, so you're talking about £50. You can also get them from a fantastic supplier from RPM Racing in the USA. Obviously, if you're not in the USA, I'm not, I'm in Scotland, as you might tell from the accent. You know, it's like $40 of postage or something, but I was buying some other bits anyway um, from RPM. Beautiful oil cooler kit that they do for the bike and beautiful front fork brace. brace. So I got a few bits that was kind of worth doing. Um, and the fourth thing about the, if you take these shafts out is there are tiny little screws that screw the throttle plate, which sits, it's quite tight, the throttle plate sits inside through the middle of the, the arm and there's two little screws which are countersunk screws and what you'll find is yeah countersunk you see little countersunk holes here trying to get the old ones out the Makini ones out is a bit of a swine because obviously you really don't want those coming out and getting sucked into your engine or its toast so Yamaha when they made or when they couldn't make the carbs originally they stake the ends over they must use a special tool to support the arm and they stake the ends so when you're trying to actually take them out you'll find it's really hard not to damage the screw heads on the little Makuni countersunk screws because they're going to be really hard to get out because of the, the staking on the ends. So you could try grinding off the end a little bit or you just have to be really careful taking them out and you'll probably mince the heads of them. So searching around for replacements, I looked at loads of different possibilities. I tried, just bought lots of little tiny machine screws to test. I ended up using these. That's what I ended up using. So these were fantastic. Uh, this cost me, I think, all of three pounds uh, plus postage to get. So the company's called Westfield Fasteners. Really great service, good guys. And these are, um, they're M3 by a half mil pitch. These ones are six millimeters long. And these ones are, they're countersink, so they fit in the countersink holes and they've got a Torx head on them rather than being a Phillips or a, you know, GIS or um, PosiDrive head. So you can apply more torque. So that is uh, that was a really good find for me. Took a little bit of hunting around to find that. And these ones also are in A4 grade, uh, so that's marine grade stainless steel. So they should stand up reasonably well. So that was four things to look out for in relation to rock alarms if you take those apart. Um, what's next? Yeah, in terms of just cleaning, uh, third point, cleaning. I'm lucky I've got little ultrasonic cleaners, so obviously clean off the outside of these as much as you can using some kind of degreaser or brake cleaner or whatever and get them reasonably clean before you actually take them apart so you don't get grot inside. I put them through the ultrasonic and they come out clean but they'll still be really stained. I don't have a manky set to show you but it's only if you do this if you get them soda blasted or you'll see people talking about wet blasting or vapour blasting. It's an absolutely gorgeous finish. It just leaves it absolutely beautiful in appearance and it, it, it doesn't uh, damage the surface or take away any of the fine lettering or, or mess up any orifices. So I got mine done by a lovely guy called Andy at Sutton's Soda Blasting. Sutton's Soda Blasting. You can look him up um, on the internet and they've got a Facebook page and lots of photos. Really good guy. Probably cost me about £90, £100, including postage both ways. That was pretty decadent. I know it was a birthday present to myself to get these done. The problem is once you start cleaning, repairing, painting bits, you just decide I didn't want them to look horrible. 
Um, you can, number four is you can go completely daft with all the little brackets, like the little brackets for the choke mechanism and uh, I guess the vacuum cover tops, these kind of things as well. On my original set, I did go a bit daft and I got them zinc plated. Uh, I got Andy at Sutton Soda Blasting to do that too and it was beautiful. But that's quite a lot of extra expense. So for this second set, I just painted it myself. I'm actually reasonably pleased with the result. So, for example, that holds the little bracket that holds the throttle cables. And I think it's okay. It's not brilliant, but actually all this stuff is, of course, hidden anyway. But I'm just so nuts. I like to, to try and make it look good. So you either, if you want them to look fab, have to go down the zinc plating route, cost you a bit of money, or you can just get a rattle can and paint them carefully yourself. Um, fifth thing is O-rings for the fuel transfer tubes and the vent tubes. So if you're stripping them completely, taking them off the rack, so dismantling them off the two brackets that hold them together, then you probably, well, you will want to replace the little O-rings that sit at this. That's the central T that has the fuel coming into the engine. Um, and these ones have got, they've got four O-rings because they've got two on each side, so it's a kind of double um, affair. And then you've got the little vent pipes that sit between carbs one and two and three and four. Uh, they have four as well, two on each side, and then you've got, that's a fuel transfer pipe, sorry, and then you have the vent pipes, which just have one on each side. So in total, you need 16 of those little um, O-rings for fuel transfer and vent pipes. You don't actually seem to get enough in the Keister kit, which seems a great kit, but I'll come back to that, so you might have to buy those separately. Uh, and also, of course, you will probably want to change all the bolts that hold the brackets and the little bolts that hold the float bolts on. You could just do that yourself, just measure the old ones, find ones the right size. You can, of course, refit your old ones if the heads are all right, but they look pretty horrible. Cheapest way to do this, I found, is RPM in the USA do a brilliant kit. It's got 121 pieces in it, and it only costs $24. And it gives you all of those O-rings that you need for the fuel transfer and vent pipes and stuff. And it also gives you all the, um, all the bolts and, and washers and stuff you need. So that's fantastic value and definitely worth doing. Uh, what else, what else? So number seven, slide diaphragms. Yeah, common problem is that on the vacuum slides, the diaphragms become um, damaged and worn with age. The easiest way to check is I found go somewhere dark inside a dark garage or room, hold them up to the light, put a torch through them. So shine a torch through and you're looking to see if you see any tears or pinholes. Uh, obviously, if they're really damaged, you'll notice that. Uh, and if they're damaged, the carbs are really not going to work. So you're going to have to fix or replace that. You have three options. You can repair, you can replace the diaphragms or replace the whole slide with diaphragm. I chose to repair these ones, uh, three of them, because they were actually okay. So I used this product here, Plasti Dip, which I got from the manufacturer in the UK. You can just look it up. It's an absolutely fantastic little thin rubberized type paint. It's painted on with a brush. I'm wondering if there's even any of these bits you can see. It's so fine. So yeah. I just went round the diaphragm looking for a couple of little bits, for example here, but it's not quite torn through. You could just see a tiny bit of light, a little pinhole almost forming. Just a little coating of that plasti dip, let it dry. It's really flexible. I don't know if it'll last forever, but I've done that with a spare set. On the, the other route you can go is to replace the diaphragms. This is my another set from original carbs. I got these replaced by someone who remained nameless because I really liked them, but I just wasn't happy. They're really thick. I mean, really thick, and I just thought, I don't know that they're going to lift well, if they're going to just be restricting the slide to lift a bit because they're so hard to compress. I may be wrong about that, they may be fine, but I wasn't sure, so I replaced or repaired the ones in here, as I say. One of them was really damaged my diaphragm, so I bought a whole new slide and diaphragm. This is a genuine McCuney one. You can get these for about £65, £70. Pounds. I got mine off the internet. You can get one from um, NRP Carbs, great guys, really good, bought some bits off them. So you can get it from them for I think £66, including that, if you want a new one. But obviously if you do that times four, that really starts to add up. Uh, so that's your options, repair or replace the whole thing. Or you can, sorry, you can just get some people who just sell you the diaphragm. You can kit to fit it yourself, I don't fancy that, or they'll fit it for you if you send the slides. So number eight is replacing jets. So what I've done for this is I bought a full Keister kit, so well-known um, carb repair kit. That's the Keister kit for this model. Um, comes with loads of bits. So they tend to do two, a sort of basic and then a comprehensive kit. This is a comprehensive kit. It's got loads of stuff in it. 
So you get the emulsion tube or the needle jet, you get the all important little uh, float valve. So you get a little float valve and the seat that it goes in, that's, um, that can leak quite common because of leaking carbs, that being a bit worn. You also get um, main jet and pilot air jet and you get the mixture screws, have the tiny little tip on the end that can sometimes get damaged. You get those and the spring for them and stuff. You also do get the, you get the needles, you get the fuel needles. I haven't used them because I'm using some dyno jet ones and you get a little e-clip for that. So really comprehensive kit. They're about, from NRP carbs, keys, full keister kits, about £25 each. So obviously £100 to do four of those. Um, the one thing I see I found with the kit was, it seems to give you in each kit two of these little black O-rings, the ones that do the fuel and the vent transfer pipes. But I say to do a full set of carbs, you actually need 16 of those if you're taking the carbs apart, taking them off the rails. Um, I guess not everybody takes the carbs off the rails if you're not taking them actually apart, the four carbs separating. If you're not doing that, you don't need any. But just to be aware, you know, the keister kit, you only get eight if you buy four keister kits, not the 16 that you need. Um, what else? I also got a dyno jet kit for these spare set because there's a KN filter in my bike and it's got a Remus 4 to 1 exhaust and it was set up in, with a dyno jet kit on the original carbs. So I thought I'd replicate that. That's the kit for the European model, different kits depending on the model of your FG and what country it originates in. So these give you um, give you replacement main jets, a whole variety of sizes. They give you the uh, dyno jet needles, which you can just see even by eye when you look at them against the original needles are, are different in profile. They give you little clips and circlips and stuff you need. So uh, they also give you a drill because they recommend you drill a slide lift hole. So that's the little hole on the slide that um, helps the air pressure and causes the slide to lift. I noticed actually that on my original carbs, which were set up by a company, a great company, don't exist anymore, called Specials in Glasgow, and decades ago when I got my 4 into one pipe fitted and the DynoJet kit fitted, um, they haven't drilled them because you've got a drill bit in the DynoJet kit and I noticed it won't fit through that and the hole's the same size as the hole in the slide lift hole is on my brand new McCuny slide. So they didn't do them, so I'm not going to do mine because it was beautifully set up on the dyno those years ago and did work. Uh, what else? That's a dyno jet kit. Um, pilot air jet, she had daft little thing. Don't forget if you're wanting to strip and clean the carbs, don't forget to remove the pilot air jet, which sits here. So inside here, you get your screwdriver in, the right size, the tip on it, and uh, you want to just unscrew that if you're wanting to clean every bit of your carbs. Easy to forget that jet. Um, where are we now? Uh, mixture screw. Yeah, the little tiny mixture screw for setting your mixture for idle. Um, that, that has a spring and then a tiny washer and then an o-ring. Be really careful when you're taking that out that that doesn't that fall away and get lost or it just ends up staying inside the carbs and then you're cleaning them and it disappears. So there's a tiny little washer. It goes spring, then washer, then o-ring when you put it back in. And fitting it back in, I found it was easiest to have the carbs because it goes in here upside down and just to get it all set up with the spring and the washer and, and push it up in there because I felt trying to put it down the way, the washer would fall off, the spring would fall off. But maybe there's a better way to do it. That's what I worked out was best. Uh, what else? Float needle. The little float needle, common problem is they leak because the tip on that little black rubber tip is damaged. So you probably want to try and take a close-up photo of yours, have a really good look at it, blow it up and check if there's any damage to it. Uh, or the other problem is that float needle sits into this seat. Yeah, and sometimes what you'll find is that that's leaking. You can replace the o-ring in that. Um, so you've got to watch it's not leaking fuel past that. Uh, last couple of things, we're number 13, JIS screwdrivers, and if, unless you've been hiding under a rock, you must know this, but it's called JIS, Japanese Industry Standard. It's a little bit different to a Phillips or a Positrive screwdriver, so you want to get these, um, because if you're dismantling the carbs, it just fits slightly differently, and less chance of you coming out on the screwdriver when you're trying to undo uh, screws, especially, I guess, things like the little McCuny ones, the smaller ones that are holding the butterfly plate, so that throttle arms if you're replacing those. Uh, number 14, fuel level. Uh, you've got to set the fuel level up properly. That's a little bit tricky and probably a job for another video. You can do it two ways. 
you know, actually the way you'll see loads of people doing measuring the height that the float sits off the, um, the height that it sits in the bowl. Or secondly, you can actually assemble the carbs and then you run a plastic tube off the um, fuel bowl um, drain. Just undo that fuel bowl drain plastic tube and you actually hold it against the side of the carb and you get a measurement of where the fuel level is sitting because of atmospheric pressure uh, bearing down on it. It will sit at the same height as the fuel inside the bowl, so that's a, a more accurate way. And the very last thing, something really stupid that I realised I'd done, which caused me the problems on the other set of carbs, when you are sticking your needle back into, you assemble this with a little clip and washer and it's going back inside the slide, there's actually on this needle, there's a little plastic washer that goes on. And that little plastic washer has a tiny tang, a little tab, a little peg sitting off the bottom of it. And when you put the needle in, you have to be really, really careful that that little peg locates in a hole right beside the centre hole the needle goes into. So if you don't get that right, then your needle will be sitting too high because the little peg hasn't located, the needle hasn't gone right down. And that means that when the bike's running at idle and it should just be running the pilot circuit with the pilot jet and the pilot air jet feeding in fuel and air, actually the needle sitting out in the main jet and letting more fuel pass. So that was one of my uh, big cock-ups. Um, and that's about it. So there you go, that's 15 things that uh, I thought might be of some interest should you happen to be as mad as me and trying to completely refurb a set of um, Makuni PS36 carbs. So good luck. Cheers.